Hi everyone, so in this video, I'll be sharing some strategies that I use for the bio biochem section on the MCAT. I will be doing this by showing you how I work through a passage. And the passage that I'll be working through was taken from the AAMC full and 3 exam. My first strategy would be to skim through the passage and only highlight familiar words. So at the beginning of my prep, I made the mistake of highlighting random details such as names of different substituents. And that wasn't helpful because I ended up taking too much time doing the highlighting and also going back figuring things out. So the only time you'll want to highlight the names of different substituents will be if the passage is short and doesn't contain a lot of details. But for a passage like this one, you'll want to stick to only highlighting familiar words. As you can see from this clip, I'm quickly reading through the passage, trying to get the main idea, as well as highlighting familiar words like cell surface receptor, epiptotic signaling, protease, transcription factor, lex catalytic activity, kinases 1 and 2, phosphorylation. My next tip would be to identify and highlight the hypothesis, independent variable, dependent variable, and control. So here I'm highlighting why the researchers are conducting the experiment, which is to understand the role of C-flip in non-epiptotic fast signaling. I'm also highlighting the three experimental conditions, which are s fast ligand, TNF, and CM, which is the negative control. I made a note of the dependent variable here, but didn't actually highlight it. Instead, I highlighted phosphorylated tyrosine residues. Phosphorylation of P38 is an indication of normal epiptotic signaling. The two figures here bring me to my next point, which is to avoid interpreting graphs or data until the question specifically asks for it. This will save you a lot of time because sometimes the questions don't even ask about the figures. My next tip would be to make a pathway for passages that have a lot of details or names. This will help you organize all of the information so you don't need to go back to the passage to answer questions. Here you can see that I'm constantly referring back to the passage in order to draw my pathway. Since the first paragraph in the passage talks about the epiptotic signaling, I'll start by drawing out the pathway for that. So first we have the fast cell surface receptor, which is involved in epiptotic signaling. Then the fast receptor leads to the recruitment of FAD, which is the fast associated death domain protein. Then FAD leads to the um, leads to the recruitment of procaspase 8. Procaspase 8 is activated and becomes caspase 8, which is also a protease that triggers the apoptotic cell death. So this is how I would summarize the first paragraph. Next we'll move on to the second paragraph which talks about another signaling pathway that doesn't always lead to cell death. It seems like this signaling pathway also starts with a ligand binding to the fast receptor causing a downstream effect. So that's why I've um, put the arrow below the fast receptor. This other signaling pathway leads to the activation of transcription factor NFKB. I've made, I've used the short form trans F for transcription factor and that activates C-flip. Since C-flip lacks catalytic activity and resembles caspase 8, it could be a competitive inhibitor, but I'm not too sure about that. That's why I've put a question mark beside competitive inhibitor. Next, C-flip activates kinases 1 and 2, 
And for kinases, I've used, I've abbreviated kinases with K1 and K2. So this is essentially how I would draw out the pathway for this passage. Okay, let's try to answer some questions now. So the question is, overexpression of C flip and other cell types will most likely result in... So I recommend reading through all of the answer choices before actually answering the question. But in this case, I don't think that's really necessary. We could start by figuring out what the overexpression of C flip does. So I know that C flip lacks catalytic activity, which means that it's not able to carry out normal protease activity, which is responsible for the uh, apoptosis or cell death. And you can refer back to your pathway if you didn't remember this. Knowing this, I'm going to quickly eliminate all of the increased apoptosis options. So I'm left with only A and B. Option A says the decrease is in response to TNF. I'm going back to see what TNF is. It's one of the experimental conditions. And that doesn't seem very relevant because it has to do with the experiment. Next, option B says the decrease is in response to the fast ligand, which makes sense because if you go to the pathway, you'll know that after the fast ligand binds to the receptor, it starts, it starts the other signaling pathway. So it would make more sense if the fat is responsible for the decrease in cell death. So the next question asks, which type of catalytic activity is most likely missing from C-flip? Now, I know that C-flip resembles caspase 8. And caspase 8 contains protease activity. So proteases carry out hydrolysis of proteins, meaning that caspase 8 has hydrolase activity, which means that C-flip does not have this hydrolase activity. So the answer to this question would be D, hydrolase activity. Question 3 asks, cells that contain a large amount of phosphorylated P38 are most likely. So I'm going back to uh, figure out what P38 does. So here, um, after experiment 1, uh, in the second last paragraph, it says phosphorylation of P38 is an indication of normal epiptotic signaling in the GM6112 cells. So P38 is responsible, responsible for regular cell death. In other words, is responsible or it involves the caspase 8 pathway, which leads to cell death. So we're looking for an answer choice that indicates cell death. 
So the first three options, increasing in size, replicating their DNA, and dividing show cell growth, while option D shows cell death. And that is our answer. Question 4 asks, based on the passage, the overexpression of which protein is most likely associated with GM6112 cells becoming cancerous? Well, it can't be fast because that's a ligand and that initiates both pathways. So it initiates the cell death pathway as well as the other signaling pathways. If you didn't remember this, you can always go back to your pathway. Um, in this case, I've drawn my pathway beside the passage, but you'll have it, you'll have it um, on a separate sheet of paper with you while writing the exam. If you go back to your pathway, you'll remember that FAD is involved in the cell death pathway. Caspase 8 is also involved in the cell death pathway. Okay, so I'm just going back to the pathway. Here you can see all of the proteins. There's caspase 8, which is responsible for cell death. There is also FAD, which is involved in cell death again, and FAST ligand, which, which is involved in both of the pathways. C-FLIP doesn't contain catalytic activity, so it's cancerous because it doesn't lead to cell death. That means the overexpression of C-FLIP will lead to the accumulation of cells, meaning that it's cancerous. While caspase 8 pathway is non-cancerous because it leads to cell death. So the answer is C flip because there is a decrease in cell death which is due to the lack of catalytic activity. Lack of catalytic activity as I said before leads to accumulation of cells making it cancerous. So we wanted a protein that wasn't involved in the cell death pathway for the answer to this question. So this is how I would solve this biobiochem passage. Um, you might have noticed that I barely looked at the figures and that's because the question didn't ask for it. And if I looked at the figure and tried to understand it before, I would have just wasted time and time is very precious on the MCAT, so ignore the figures until the question asks for it. Also, to give you a rough estimate of how much time I would spend on a passage like this, I would probably spend around 8 minutes on this passage. I would spend up to a minute just highlighting words and skimming through the passage and then spending around two minutes making the pathway and then rest of the time answering questions or analyzing figures whatever i need to do so that's it i hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions or suggestions please let me know uh, in the comments and i'll try to address them as soon as i can